Knights Journey of Dreams. Sega's Knights into Dreams was one of the Sega Saturn's best games. For years, people clamored for Sega to bring this to another system, to port it somehow to any one of the new consoles, maybe even with updated graphics. But for years, nothing. That is, until Sega decided to bring this little gem to the Nintendo Wii. Knight's Journey of Dreams is the long-awaited sequel to Sega Journey into Dreams. And while this game doesn't quite live up to the legacy of the original, it certainly maintains most of its charm. Everything about it just oozes charm. There's no denying that there is a bit of a nostalgic factor to the game, but that certainly doesn't take away from the fact that this game actually is a very fun, very charming, very colorful game to play. There's definitely no arguing that this game is absolutely safe for all age groups to play, but equally as an adult, you just want to pick up that controller and start playing this game and remembering the original all over again. The game is an on-rails game. It does have a, a feel of a 3D open world, but be aware that the characters do move on a set path, and you can really only move up, down, left, or right. But you're always working against the clock, always trying to complete the level before you run out of time, so the game does offer plenty of challenge. As a worthy successor to the original, and it's an excellent game to play on the Nintendo Wii. I give the game a solid 8.5 out of 10. Epic Mickey. I remember when news first broke about Epic Mickey. Epic Mickey was going to be a magnum opus of nostalgia. This game was aiming to take classic tunes and somehow fuse it with a modern sensibility. And to do that, Disney Interactive needed to bring Mickey back to his roots. And taking it even further, they brought back Oswald, the Lucky Rabbit. For those of you who do not know who Oswald is, Oswald is Walt Disney's first and original creation. The art design is absolutely stunning. I cannot even put into words how beautiful Epic Mickey looks. Everything about it is amazing, right down to the design. It is, well, kind of creepy at times. The game is rated only E for everybody, but I mean, seriously, look at this. This is nightmare fuel. But in the end, while this game is definitely, definitely content safe for kids to play, this game is actually quite hard. 
In some respect, it is because the controls were not 100%, well, perfected, let's say. And it made fighting certain enemies maybe a little harder than it should be. But there's also a lot of puzzle solving and platforming. So once again, while this is safe for all ages, this game certainly does not insult the intelligence of an adult. Epic Mickey gets a solid 8.7 out of 10. Oswald, it's you. You and me with heart and nerve. Together, we'll be heroes. A second chance is what we all deserve. Epic Mickey 2. Okay, so yeah, we, we do have a sequel on this list. But hear me out, guys. I love the art design for the first game. I really do. I love the animation for the first game. I really do. I mean, look at this animation from the first game. But everything that Epic Mickey did well, with the exception of a few things, Epic Mickey 2 does it better. Here, we have upgraded animation. I mean, look how reminiscent to the first game this animation is, but look how much smoother it is. While the first game didn't have any voice acting, it just had, well, it had voice actors, but just making noises and not actually saying any words. Here, we have full-blown voice acting. Um, how about we try to get to the bottom of this? Where is the Mad Doctor? Not only that, but the controls are far better perfected in this game. So when this game does get challenging, it's not because the control scheme isn't working 100% correctly. It's because, well, the game is challenging. The one thing I do think the first game did better is the overall art design of the in-game graphics. Epic Mickey 2 looks amazing but it does lack some of the darker, twisted elements that I found so appealing in the first game. The first game just feels a little bit more twisted, magically twisted, where this one feels very magical and whimsical, but it doesn't quite have the darkness. With that said, Epic Mickey 2 is still a great game, and with that, it does get a higher score, at an 8.9 out of 10. Raymond Origins. Raymond Origins is not necessarily based off of anything new. Raymond has been around since the days of the early PlayStation 1. But, arguably, this is the game that brought Raymond back into the limelight. 
In an age of high definition graphics and everything looking pretty and everything looking smooth and colorful, the Nintendo Wii opted not to take the high definition route. But that did not stop games like Raymond Origins from being an absolutely artistically beautiful game. This game looks amazing. It looks like a cartoon in motion. It's very colorful, very bright, and very, very, it just pops off the screen. And all this without high definition graphics. The game has a fun, challenging platforming design, much in the same vein as like Mario or early Mega Man games. And the game moves at a fast clip. It is a very well paced game. And everything about it is just charming. For a game that is very clearly safe for all ages to play, it doesn't insult the intelligence of an adult sensibility. Seriously, look at this game. It's like Looney Tunes in motion. Raymond Origins gets a very solid 9 out of 10. The Final Fantasy games have been around for years. And with that said, just like any franchise that's been around for a while, this series has broken off into a ton of side projects. A Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo Dungeon is just a gigantic nostalgia trip. The game brings back the job system from Final Fantasy 3, as well as Final Fantasy 5, and even Final Fantasy Tactics, which took it to a whole different level, where you play as a very cute and adorable Chocobo who is capable of being a black mage, a red mage, a knight, so on and so forth. Yeah, this little thing is cute, but it can kick your ass. The story is simple enough. You're on a treasure hunt with Sid. There's always a Sid in the Final Fantasy, ladies and gentlemen. And you basically get sucked into another dimension. You land in a town where every time the clock strikes, people lose a memory. Eventually, when so many memories are lost, any given person basically loses themselves. Sid becomes a victim of the clock when they land in the town. And Chuckabo, being the good little Chuckabo that he is, must reach into Sid's mind, quite literally as he enters Sid's thoughts, and crawls through a dungeon to defeat an enemy and gain back a piece of Sid's memory. Well, this becomes the entire premise of the game. You're not just going through Sid's memories, you're going through the memories of everybody pretty much in this town. So it's Chocobo's quest to help people regain all of who they are by helping them regain their memories. This is a traditional RPG, and while younger people will certainly be able to play this game because the content is safe, the overall setup is definitely aimed at an older audience. So, with that said, I'm going to give Chocobo Dungeon a very solid 9.5 out of 10. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is five games on the Nintendo Wii that I feel are not only safe for everybody to play, 
but that are actually good and doesn't insult the intelligence of any adults out there playing games. And while the Nintendo Wii did have a lot of shovelware games that were just aimed at younger audiences and weren't very good and even insulted their intelligence, if you look, and you don't have to look that hard, there are plenty of great games for all people to play on the Nintendo Wii. This is the Metal Geek saying, have a great one guys.